and welcome to my channel. I am Lady Calamere and I am doing my 38th video presentation. This will be on the goddess Tiamat. She is before the gods. She is ancient and primordial. She is a Babylonian goddess that helped create, that was the co-creator of the gods and goddesses. She was the ancient mother. Her, uh, along with Apsu. So, Tiamat. Let's get into it. Who is she? What is she? What is she about? Why do I have this Leviathan key? Why do I have dragons? Okay, so she comes in three major forms. One is the form of the ocean, an actual ocean. The second one is in the form of a mermaid. The third one is a form of a great black dragon. And when I say great, I mean she was said to stretch out at least over 100 miles long. And that her head can reach up to about over 6 miles. And her mouth can just swallow things whole. I mean, she was a great gigantic dragon. So other forms are like a snake. Also, as for a dragon to be one-headed or she even said to be five-headed dragon. That's why I have these images now also another one is a black snake and a later hellenistic depiction now this is not ancient babylonian this is a, a, a later hellenistic as a woman half a woman's body right on the top and the lower part are like the snake tails so no that's not an ancient ancient form of hers that's hellenistic i mean it's still ancient but not ancient ancient so Okay, so Absu is her husband, or was her husband, and Tiamat would be seen as the bitter waters, the salty waters, where he is the sweet waters, the fresh water. And if you look at the two, he, she represents culture. I mean, I'm sorry, she represents nature, not culture. She represents nature where he represents culture. She represents chaos where he's more about order. And she's the divine feminine where he is the divine masculine. Now, those two, mother and fathered the deities Lamu and Lahamu, the great man, not a male and female. Then La, Lamu and Lahamu had children, Anshar and Kishar, another female, male and female. So Anshar and Kishar, male, female. They had Anu and Ki. And from there, they had, uh, they begat Ea, also in uh, Samaria and Enki. And with them, Kina and Ki had Marduk. And there's a reason why I bring this line, because Marduk fights Tiamat. Now, both are Tiamat and Apsu. And, and, and by the way, Apsu, look at the... Apsu later becomes the waters underneath the earth where Ea takes his home. And Apsu gives rise to the word, the abyss. Or the abyss, uh, when we see the abysmal waters. Now, Tiamat, when Apsu had the problems with the younger gods, it was he who came to Tiamat to destroy say destroy them and she would not be right back folks 
My cat is calling. Sorry, folks. But my cat. He doesn't want to drink out of the water bowl. He wants to drink out of the fountain because he doesn't want to drink with the rest of the peasant cats. So, <laughs> anyways, back to what I was saying because I don't write anything down. I don't use notes. It all comes from my head. So, Tiamat is an ancient dark mother and she is a force to be reckoned with. No, she is not dead. She was only merely, uh, yeah, she was fought and she won lost a war with Marduk. But after he defeats her, her eyes, her, her eyes that he could not even look into for he would have been hypnotized or destroyed, became the waters of the Euphrates and Tigris. Her upper body and lower body were transformed from the heavens and the earth. Her breasts became the mountains, and her tail became the swirly stars of the Milky Way. So her ribs upheld the heavens from the earth. So we see her transformed, and yes, she is still worshipped, yes, she's still powerful, and yes, there were guardians to protect her from rising again as she was again, and devour, unless she devour everything. Now, is she evil? No. Is she approachable? Depends which form you come to. And Tiamat, yes, she's an ancient primordial dark goddess of the deep dark waters. The bitter sea. And yes, she is a warrior goddess. And I'll get into why there was a fight between Tiamat and Marduk. So, I do want to bring this up, is that the tablets on her stories, the stories of the ancient tab were written on seven tablets. So, the most important of them is actually the fifth tablet. So, the Enuma Elish, where you'll find the story, is called When on, upon, when on High. Like, when in the heights, when in the he heavens. So, Enuma Elish. And it was first re re recovered, I, I, you know, by a man named Henry Layard in 1849 in Neva. So, it was later on in the 1870s published by George Smith. Okay, now... Actually, the most important tablet would have been the fourth tablet. See, I don't write anything down. So, it was first published in eight. What was it? Eighteen eighty. Eighteen eighty. Eighteen eighty. Eighteen eighty-seven by E. A. Wallace Budge, and translated by um, his last name is Sace. S-A-Y-C-E. I don't know his first name. I just know the initial is A. Sace. So. Now. Ow, I'm itchy. So the fifth tablet, this is by when I brought up, but the fifth tablet was the one that was, uh, some of it was damaged and it could never be fully recovered. So, and that's such a loss to all of us, you know, it's a loss to history. It sucks, but they were clay, clay, seven clay tablets. So what do you expect? So, and that's how, it... so. She does later have another consort who is actually one of her children, Kingu. Kingu. 
So we'll get into that. So to make a long story short, the younger gods were making a ruckus. Absu goes to Tiamat, say, hey, I can't neither rest by day or sleep by night. We need to do something about them. And Tiamat was like, what? And Absu says, kill them. She says, I can't, we can't kill them. They're our children. They're our family. We created them. How can we destroy something we create? So Absu still wanted to follow through on killing them. And she relates the story to Ia to be on his guard. She wanted to warn him, but she didn't want Ea and Babylonian Enki and Sumerian to kill Apsu, in which he does. And he does something horrible. He actually casts a circle. He creates a spell. He puts Apsu to sleep. Okay, that's fine. But then he goes and kills him. Not only that, let's add insult to injury. He kills Apsu. He puts, he takes his crown for himself and wears his high crown. Then he takes his belt and wears the belt. Then he takes his mantle of glory, his mantle of magnificence, his mantle of power for himself. And now he takes Absu in, his, in the waters, the fresh water, as his home under the earth. This enraged Tiamat, in which she gives, she gives, she makes, creates Kingu. And she has with him... 11 main children and these children are really dark and actually she doesn't use them as the father she creates them out of her own blood but she uses she gives kingu the tablet of destiny the holy may me and gives him the power makes her his general so she's still the big head honcho, and she's going to fight too. But she makes these monstrous, like demonic children, and they are still called on today for different things. I personally have not worked with them yet, so yet. Oh, and by the way, it was also Mumu. And that's a visor of Absu and Tiamat that advised Absu to kill the children. And Mumu, we'll get into that later, means uh, opened. So his name means open, and I'm just trying to think what the other name is. But that's a name that also Tiamat takes. So... I don't remember all the children, but the, uh, the first and foremost is Mushmahu. Mushmahu. There is also Bashmu. There's Ushu Magalu. Uh, I don't remember all of them. Ugalu. Uridimu. Remembering most of them. Girta Blue, I want to say. Anyways, I can't remember them all. Sorry, maybe I should write these down one day. But she uses her children, or she makes their blood venomous and everything, and that they, they're poisonous, they have venom. That's my cat. He wants attention. And the gods are now seriously scared. They're scared of Tiamat because she has impenetrable uh, scales and her eyes. They can hypnotize you. They She can uh, swallow you whole. Like an hors d'oeuvre. So it was Marduk, the son of Damkima. And Ea, who is also Ea, is also called Nudamud, said, I will fight Tiamat if you elevate me above y'all. All y'all. They agreed. So it was Marduk who took his chariot and he has three horses. 
Slayer. Pity, no, four horses. Slayer, Pitiless, Merciless, and Race, Racer. So he uses, he actually, when they see Marduk coming, his the children just friggin' uh, flee. He fights Tiamat. He, he blows an evil wind into her mouth, which fills her belly. And with his arrows, he shoots him into her belly. And like the rest, his, her, she, he divided up her body. Now, and here we are. Shadow. So, anyways... Baal Codman. Baal Codman has a wonderful book and I'm not going to steal his thunder. I really do recommend it. And he describes about how she could be found in the Old Testament in Genesis. And if I could find the book, that would be nice. Actually, it's on my tablet. So let's open it. No, 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 no. No shadow. Ah. Baal Kadmon, Tiamat Unveiled, Embracing the Primordial. This is the best book to get. This is really the best book. And well, there's another book, The Grimra. Of Tiamat by Aseneth Mason. And also, there's another book, which is not directly on, on Tiamat, but Maskim Hole, a Babylonian magic by Michael W. Ford. Has a lot of info on it. So, Baal Kadmon also uses Gamatria. Which is a Kabbalistic numerology, and how he come, how he does his research, and he actually shows his research. He's not something, he 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 doesn't make shit up. This guy is awesome. So that book has also rituals in it, but this one is actually darker than Baal Kadman. Kadman, this is really dark. So if you're into dark magic, this is for you. But. The other one also has dark stuff in it, too. So, um, trust me, Baal Codman's book is on Tiamat. It's not light and, light and fluffy. Trust me. He also describes how, and I, I've already, I've already seen her as Leviathan, but he really connected the dots for me. Because I always saw her as Le, the Leviathan. Not the behemoth of the Bible, but Leviathan. And he really connects the dots with that. And also how her number is 666 and how he comes up with that. And he does, again, real scholarry research. So, yes, yeah, so her number attributed to her would be no, will be 666. And she is the Leviathan. That's why I have the Leviathan key. So, anyways, after he defeats Marduk, let me go back and track because I have ADD. I got distracted because of him. He's distraction. So he the, he actually has Kingu slaughtered, in which the blood of Kingu was made with you know Eon and, and the goddesses and stuff made humans with the blood of Kingu. And the children pretty much are now under servitude of Marduk. And that's how the story was. So I got to turn off that water. It's driving me nuts. So, 
Oh, sorry about that. Anyways, the tarot cards. Yes, the oracle cards. Dark goddess oracle card is Tiamat control. And this, because I got to give credit where credit is due. Babylonian Tarot by Sandra Tabitha Cicero. So images that you can use for her. Definitely salt water. If you can't get to the beach, you get the beach water. You can use salt water. Mermaids. Serpents. Dragons. But black dragons. Be it one-headed or five-headed. He's going to break everything. Ah! So... Freaking incense. That fell. Mermaids. And really. Why must you do this? But anyways, let me let me not concentrate on him. Myrrh is a good uh, resin to burn for her as well as dragon blood resin and dragon blood your head is all wet dragon blood liquid as well as resin and dragon's blood ink would be of her her stones or emerald there's another stone other stones that you can use are dark stones Dragon's Blood Calcite. The color is awesome. It looks like Dragon's Blood Resin. And I did a presentation on Dragon's Blood Calcite. So you can look that under my channel. Just put it in a search bar. Azurite is another one of her stones. Her celebration day in Babylon, and it was celebrated as her birthday. But I know it's on November 6th, so you can celebrate Tiamat. She has different names. You could call her Mumu Tiamat, Tiamat Tehom, the Deep. You could call her Tatum, Tatum. She is also Mumu Tiamat, Mumu Hubar, Hubar Tiamat. Michael Ford lists her as one of the aspects of Ishtar. And I'm not sure which aspect, but he said that she is an aspect. I really don't have permission from him. I didn't ask for permission from him. I really don't know him. To really go through the book. I will say there are rituals in here. His Maskeem Hall. It's really good. The Baal Cad Codman's book. I did ask for permission. I So. And I'll show you what's in it. Just give you a table of contents. About the Enuma Elish, Tiamat as Tehom, Tiamash as Rahab. And he describes there's, there's two different spellings of Rahab, Rahab and Rahab. The Rahab is her. Tiamat as Leviathan. Tiamat behind the veil. Tiamat unveiled. Calling upon the primordial deep. The calling of the deep. Opening ritual for personal self-empowerment. For bindings of enemies, for unsurpassed psychic abilities, for passion and lust, for the mastery of the material world, for making whole that which is undone, a ritual for health. And of course, to want to enhance your rituals of Tiamat, one, two. So it's pretty cool. This book is really, really cool. It's full of, loaded with information. And I have yet to get it in print. So, I do recommend that book. Tiamat could be used for other things. And Tiamat could be used for defeating your enemies, hexing your enemies.
protecting yourself against your enemies. She can also be used for actually improving your finances, improving your status in life to create, to create and to transform yourself. She could be used for binding. Binding of situations, not just of people, but binding of spirits. Binding of a situation. Binding of a group of people. Grind, binding of a single person. And she's also could be used for to see different things, different events with greater clarity. To expand your ability to love. To release your aggressions, your anger, your resentment, to, re re to release your guilt, to learn how to make better choices. So, uh, things like that she could be used. She could improve your status in life. She can also uh, humiliate, conquer your enemy. And yeah, if you were into it, death spells. She can be for your protection of your home, your property, your pets, or pest. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a pest, you're a pest. No, you're a pest. No, I'll stop. But, um, she can protect you. From a situation when you feel you're going to go into a situation. If you have to go into a discussion with people you don't want to be with. She can help you to value yourself. And know how to defend yourself. And to really be assertive. She does teach you that. But she also teaches you this patience. Best time to call on her. I mean, anytime at night. Definitely at night. You can call her during the day, but she's really under the night sky. Dark moon. So she is nature. She is part of the earth and of the sky. She is the salty water. So you can go to the beach. And praise Mother Tiamat. And if you don't have a beach. You can have a cup of salt water. Like I said before. She is the bitter sea. Things you can give to Tiamat. You can give some drops of your blood. Be careful how you harvest your blood. Not harvest, uh, get your blood. You don't want to cut a vein or an artery. I do not recommend that. I recommend, uh, again, one of those, uh, what are they called? The things for diabetics. A lancelet. Sorry, I'm still reco I still have post-COVID uh, symptoms, so I'm I'm not gonna have COVID anymore, but dragon's blood liquid because it looks just like blood. It really does. You can give her things from the sea. You can give her meat. You can give her fruit. You could give her things that are red or that are black. You could give her her stones, her azurites, and her emerald. She likes those things. So, like this card says, control. Yes, she represents domination, dominion. She can make things go in control in your favor. She can help you control yourself or others, but she can also make things go out of control. And 
throw a little change into the things or chaos. And remember, chaos is also a necessary thing. It's just part of life and nature. I have worked with Tiamat. She is a very powerful force. Sometimes she comes to people like almost like a black liquid. You ever see the Supernatural episode with the Leviathan, like the black liquid? That's how she could come like this thick black liquid. She is the goddess of night. The powers of night. The force of night. She is the powers of shade and shadow. She is the powers of the deep unconscious. Your subconscious. The part, she also could represent not just dreams, but also the part of sleep where you're deep sleep, where there is no dreams. The deep, deep sleep. Make no, no mistake, she is very powerful still to this day. Part of her powers and mysteries were the Atlantic and Pacific meet. There's like a line. That also represents her division too. It's really cool if you've seen videos of it or pictures of the Atlantic and the, and the Pacific meeting. Uh, the new, part of the uh, Numa Leash was... Well, the Enuma Leash was recited during the Babylonian New Year, which happened in spring of the new moon, in spring. So we have the fight between Tiamat and Marduk, the tower. She, rep she is a kind mother, but also a very destructive mother. She represents kindness and cruelty. So she got dubbed as evil at one point of, of Marduk being good and Tiamat being all evil. Uh, yeah, that doesn't fly. Especially with me. Or shadow. So, now there's another thing. Some Satanists, I actually know one of the Satanists that, have a, that view Tiamat as Satan. Tiamat as Mother Satan. Tiamat as, and we're not talking about Satan and God, God and the devil. We're talking, it, this is just primordial. This is like, she is the powerful force of the, of the universe. And that's the Satan. Then there's, there's, there's other Satanists that view her as the Satan. So others see her as before the gods and goddesses or an ancient primordial goddess. Yes, she could be using draconic magic. And so I, I, I had I had a, a, an exes at all. Dragons, my last ex, dragons are not gods and goddesses don't come in the form of dragons. So yes, they do. One of them is Tiamat and she's fucking, she's freaking huge. She's, 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 she's monstrously huge. And she's fierce to behold. And here's another image of Tiamat. Right here. So that's right here. 
this picture is Tiamat. She represents the deep. Not just like I said, deep of the ocean, but deep in the mind. The deep sleep. The deep mysteries. Oh, and she is, she works spells and magic and occult and she could teach you. So she, her, one of her things of how she fought Marduk is through spells and spell. Marduk also did his spells. So she is a goddess, and some people say that she is a goddess of witches. So if you're working with draconic magic, you may want to work with Tiamat. She's the ancient primordial dragon. That's why I have the dragon altar cloth here. As you can see. Even though they're Asian dragons. I used it. Because nice colors for her are black and red. As you see the black and red. Her element, of course, is water. That's her primary element. I really respect and love Tiamat. I have to say that. And I do keep this on my Mesopotamian altar. Oh, that one right there. That's behind Shadow's head. Let me move the tripod. There it is. And of course, I use this for different reasons, but so red and black candles are appropriate with her, and can just use black candles if you want. And if you're shy with the black candles, and you can use red. So you can use her for creative magic and destructive magic. Your choice, what you need to do. I don't judge. So, Tiamat could be seen as very beautiful or very fierce. Just like the ocean, very beautiful and very fierce. So, when we think of uh, dragons, they're some of them can be used for good and bad, and I'm gonna get a hold of myself uh, ahead of myself with this. But like I said, they're a draconic magicians and. I would I would really advise using Tiamat in in your works. Tiamat can represent the hidden, the unknown. Ooh, the occult, because the occult means the unknown. You can use her to find things out, what is hidden, or you can hide things. To use yourself to uh, use spells to keep yourself unnoticed, keep things that you're doing hidden, a mystery, or to reveal the mystery. She can empower you. She can empower your life and your goals if you if you let her in. If you let her. So anyways, I want to thank you for watching this video and putting up with me in shadow. Especially this boy. And if you like this video, please subscribe. Please give a thumbs up. And share this with your friends, your family, your groups on your Facebook. Or whatever social media account you have. And I want to thank you very much because... 
you watch this video and I'm very grateful and very humbled by it. Last closing thoughts on Tiamat. I do want to show you one of her symbols that is used for her. If I could find... And some other thoughts is that when she joins with Kingu, when she comes together, she becomes like a she-goat where it's male and female. And I'll show you the picture of it. And I'm rifling through a book while I'm talking to you. My finishing notes. My, my finishing, my conclusion. Here's a really nice picture. Oh, that's just Tiamat. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's Tiamat as a... I think when I make mistakes like this. But there is a picture of her somewhere, of her to get joined together with Kingu. And it becomes, like she becomes a she-goat, almost. With the horns and everything, and but she's a female. And that's a constellation of uh, Capricorn, I think, I believe. That she also represents when they come together. Well, this is actually a symbol. I can't, I can't find it drawn out, but it's like a cross with an eye. And you can see the arrow and the three prongs going up. And you can just make a simplified thing of drawing it out. Also, you can just draw out an eye because she is the all-seeing eye. So you can use that. So you can use jewelry with the eye. And here we see with the old C and I, you can also use the eye jewelry and power eye jewelry, seriously. Wear it as a ring or as a necklace to repel the evil eye, the Melochio. And you can also use it in spells, like you can like pierce an eye in uh Drawing in the eye and pierce it as piercing the Melochio. I'm just trying to find that wonderful picture and I can't. Ah, here we are! Right here. And I hope Seneth Mason wouldn't be angry at me for showing that picture because I didn't ask permission. But. It is a good book. I mean, if you're into the darker, <laughs> darker things. And, but it has also a lot of information. So I do recommend Ball Codman's and the Son of Mason. And also Michael Ford's book. You can find that on Amazon.com. And you can find these wonderful cards on, where I found them on Amazon.com again. Because I showed the picture. The Dark Goddess Oracle Cards by Barbara, I can't pronounce her name, Mike, Michael John Free, and Flavia Kate Peters, designed by Kate Osborne, and again, the Babylonian Tarot by Sandra Tabitha Cicero. So thank you very much for watching. Blessed be. Thank you, and as always, be safe.